Hello everybody, hello, hello, and welcome to the first MLS themed video. Um, so this is more of a podcast style video, and um, I'm not sure if you know this, but um, for this MLS season going from 2023, um, I'm going to have a guest with me doing some of the uh, controversial play videos, but today for this video, I'm all alone, but uh, let's not waste any time. Let's get started. Um, as you all probably know who follow MLS, the MLS season is just about a month away, give or take. Um, today is January 29th, so yeah, less than a month away until MLS Soccer, for those that don't know, it is beginning February 25th, um, with the first game being Nashville versus New York City FC, followed by, um, and that's at 4.30, Philadelphia Columbus at 7.30, uh, Cincinnati Houston Dynamo, 7.30, Atlanta United, San Jose, 7.30. Charlotte, New England, 7.30. Orlando City, New York City, Red Bulls, 7.30. Wow, so many games today. Well, wow, yeah, a lot of, a lot of games today. A lot of games. Um, DC United, Toronto, 7.30. Wow, so many 7.30 games. Inner Miami, Miami. Uh, Montreal at 7.30. Say Austin, Texas versus St. Louis. A newer MLS team that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But that's at 8.30. FC Dallas versus Minnesota at uh, 8.30. LA Galaxy versus LAFC. The two LAs go head-to-head. At 9.30, uh, Vancouver and Real Salt Lake go head-to-head at 10.30. And the last game to end the MLS evening, Portland versus Sporting Kansas City at 10.30. Followed by February 26th, the Seattle Sounders versus Colorado, and that is at 8 p.m. We got a full February 25th for you, and uh, we're very excited to bring you... Uh, that's going to be one long episode. Um, that's going to be one long episode. Let me just take a... Quick sip of water here. Hold on. Let me take the sip of water, or shall we? All right, that was good. Some H2O, right? All right. So let's talk about some of the super drafts, people, um, that were drafted onto some of the MLS teams. We're going to start with LAFC that selected... Um, goalkeeper Jazim Collate in the second round, number 58 overall. And Noah Dollenmayer in the third round, number 87 overall of the 2023 MLS Super Draft. Um, these two have great potential. I've seen Hasim, uh, it's, yeah, Hasim Collate, um, in action before he has played and uh, started in all 16 games leads america east and south uh shout outs with nine ranks that's absolutely incredible um uh he's from new hampshire he this guy has great potential honestly very excited to see what he brings to lafc um this upcoming season and as as um continue as we continue for orlando city Abdi Salim, number 17 overall, the Manland, has been selected um, for the 2023 um, MLS Super Draft, as well as Shakur Muhammad, um, which was a number two pick overall. Um, I think both these players have excellent potential. I really can't wait to see what they bring um, to Orlando. Um, you know, Orlando is already... A powerhouse for those of you that watch MLS. Orlando's already quite the powerhouse there, and um, you're just really adding on to this powerhouse. I mean, you saw 2020's um, Orlando City versus New York City game. What a hectic game that was! Um, penalty drama. It was just Orlando was really carrying there, um, and uh, Orlando was full of the Orlando was full of those superpower players where. Um, they play aggressive, but it's not necessarily that they're fouling while playing aggressive. And so uh, once you add these two uh, magnificent players onto the team, you have a new uh, now, now you have a new defender. Um, 
def- as the saying goes, for those who play soccer, offense wins games, defense wins champions. And uh, I think Abdi Salim is definitely a champion here. And now let's talk about Shakur Mohammed, um, who I believe is a forward with a number two pick overall. And I got to say, if you're number two, you're pretty good. And um, for him, what a... For him being less of a powerhouse, less of an aggressive player, were he still started most of his games that he's played outside of Major League Soccer, he's he's always been out there. He's always put in his 100% effort. And that's what Orlando's looking for. Orlando's looking for those players that not necessarily are those aggressive people because they do already have those aggressive people. You see Nani out there. Nani's, Nani's, Nani. Nani's a powerhouse, you know. Nani's always up there and uh, is always able to pass that ball back and forth, put the ball where it needs to be throughout the field. And that's what Orlando really needs this uh, upcoming season. Now let's talk about the Red Bulls, New York Red Bulls, hoping they have a better season than last year, right? Um, the New York Red Bulls selected three players at the 2023 MLS Super Draft, uh, presented by Adidas on December 21st. The, um, that club announced uh, today. Uh, the Red Bulls selected a Yale University goalkeeper, Elian Haddock, with the 21st overall pick in the first round of the 2023 MLS Super Draft. Haddock was a four-year letterman at Yale University where he made 53 appearances and uh, tallied 13 shootouts. The Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin native, is a three-time All-Ivy League first-team selection and was named the 2021 Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. In his career at Yale University, posted a .752 save percentage and tailed uh, tallied at least 27 to 42 to 10 record with 173 shots saved in total. He was a two-time captain and was the first two-time captain for Yale University since 1947. Before he started at Yale University, Haddock led Whitefish Bay High School to three state championships and was a first-team All-State selection during his junior and senior years. The Red Bulls also picked UNC Greensboro defender Ethan Conley with the 50th overall and concluded the draft by selecting Boston College midfielder Amo Shapiro Thompson, the 73rd overall third round. 17 pick. Conley was a four-year starter at UNC Greensboro where he appeared in 73 matches. He registered one goal and four assists in his uh, career and and during his junior year was a member of the defense that posted 10 shootouts in total. He has helped UNC Greensboro win, I believe it was two SOCON tournament championships and the team achieved their highest ranking in program uh, in program history, number six in the United uh, Soccer Coaches final poll. Shapiro Thompson was a three-year player at Boston College where he made 36 appearances in total. He tallied six goals and five assists during his career, including two goals and three assists in 15 appearance uh, and in 15 appearances in 2022 into early 2023. He was a member of the 2016 Milton Academy team, which won the ISL and uh, the ISL tournament while going 23-0-0. The, word, the Massachusetts native played in MLS Next uh, MLS Next with the New Year, New England Revolution for three seasons. Speaking of the New England Revolution, let's talk about their MLS 2023 Super Drafts. And the New England Revolution selected midfielder Joshua Boma in the first round with the fourth overall defender Victor Sueza. Second round, uh, 39th overall. And defender Andreas Eulin, third round, 68th overall in the 2023 Super Draft on December 21st, 2022. Um, all I got to say is I'm very excited uh, to see Andreas Euland out there. It looks like a hardworking kid out there. I mean, all of them are truly hardworking. But this kid, in prote- it, this kid particularly brings something special to the plate. This kid in particular is able to sit there and he's able to just put up that wall not like many defenders cannot do that without a little push or a little shoulder which is clearly legal in the laws of the game but um Andres Yulin can simply bring the ball uh, there and once he gets that ball he knows how to clear it very very well um so does Victor Souza and so does Victor Souza as well and um 
Joshua Balma in midfield. This person can really carry the ball. Jo uh, Balma can uh, really carry the ball just well. Midfield, uh, a true midfielder's job is to sit there, okay, and kind of like um, really just focus on how they move the ball they want to make sure the ball doesn't even touch the defense and if it god forbid does touch the defense that goalkeeper is ready for it obviously um so these three have such high potential it's very excited to see what it brings to them this season the boys in blue new york city fc's 2023 mls super draft um and last year nycfc selected kevin uh Oto, kingsford oddly and El Mahidi Yousafi then went on to sign Otol and Yousafi. Both featured regularly for New York City FC. Then Otol went on to the start the final seven competitive games of 2022 and played important roles in the win over at Atlas FC in the Components Cup, New Jersey Red Bulls in the Hudson River Derby, and Inter Miami in the 2022 MLS Cup playoffs. You never know what you might find in these more. Uh, more than 360 eligible players who are actually included in the draft. Other key New York City FC players selected in MLS Super Draft include Louis Bza and uh, Louis Veraza, Kiri Shelton, and Jonathan Lewis. Not to belabor the point, but San Johnson was the 51st overall pick in the uh, 20, 2010 MLS Super Draft, uh, quote unquote, uh, according to. Um, HudsonRiverBlue.com. We spoke about the LA. At, we spoke about LAFC. Now let's talk about LA Galaxy. Uh, drafted midfielder Gino Vivi from the University of Central Florida, number twenty-three overall in the first round, and goalkeeper Russia, Russell Sheely from Syracuse University in the second round, number fifty-two overall. Um, we're very excited to see these two uh, get on there. LA Galaxy is still oh, once again. Oh, sorry, just hiccup there. I don't know what happened there. Um, but uh, they're full of powerhouses. They want. Uh, they're full of powerhouses. For example, Chicharito. Chicharito's up there. He's he's. He's pressing. He's attacking the net. Chicharito's there. Chicharito will always be there for LA Galaxy. Very excited to see what these two bring to the plate. You know, this channel definitely wouldn't be a thing without controversy and what calls controversy besides MLS referees. Uh, pro referees um, have just, rele uh, just released who will uh, be returning um, for the 2023 season. The officiating, officiating roster has just um, uh, came out and uh, with uh, Major League Soccer's 28th season, 50 days away, here we go. The additions to the referees were Mark Aladdin, Matthew Conger, Philip Ducic, Michael Radchuk. And unfortunately, leaving the field after retiring is Sylvie Uprecetsku and Kevin Stott. Um, Kevin Stott definitely uh, made some big mistakes. He was a longtime referee. It was definitely time for him to retire. But uh, Sylvie Uprecetsku will definitely be missed. Assistant referee... Am I just salty about him screwing over New York City FC a few years ago? I could be, you know. I'm like that. <laughs> um, assistant referees. Additions to the assistant referees is Walt Heatherly, Eduardo Jeff, Kevin Locke, Ben Pilgrim, Callie Smith, uh, Stefan Tanaka, Fre Freund. Um, and l leaving the field. Retired, uh, Jeff Hosking, Peter uh, Man Manikowski and CJ Morganitz. Uh, leaving the field is Claudio Be uh, Be Beatty, Peter Balencianas, and uh, Eric Wiesbrod. VAR additions David Barry, Louis, Louis uh, Guardia, and Kevin Stott went from uh, being on the pitch to a uh, VAR. And uh, retired is Hilario Grajeda. <laughs> Assistant video reviews is Claudio B Additions, Claudio Badi, Peter Balencianas, Eric Wiesbrood, and uh, unfortunately retired Kyle Longville. Um, pro, also, pro referees also released a statement saying, quote, Pro would like to thank all the retiring officials for their contribute, contribution to officiating in North America and congratulate those who will be working their full, full season in their new roles. And Mark Yeager and Alan 
black to speak at the United Soccer Coaches Convention, nine and uh, as well as nine uh, professional referee organization officials selected for the FIFA Women's World Cup. Now we're going to do a little bit of a fun category. Um, we're going to talk about some players that are known for their um, fun tricks and stuff like that to try to confuse their referees. So we're going to talk about some players that are known for the their embellishment. And for those that don't know the actual meaning of embellishment, it is basically an attempt to deceive the referee by falsifying contact and and as well as an attempt to make contact appear more severe than it really is. You know soccer players uh, they do that sometimes. You you touch them a little bit and they're on the floor like they just got punched in the face. Um, but uh, Chenault simulation, uh, the New York City FC defender Maxime Chenault was found guilty of embellishment in the 24th minute of his team's match against Toronto. Uh, Chenault was actually fined an undisclosed amount for this. Um, so... Um, I'm actually watching the video right now. I know you can't see the video, but I'm going to tell you exactly what happens, and I'll review this play. So let's see. Chanot, Toronto, are both going for the ball. Is there? A, oh, there is a little bit. There is a little bit of a foul there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! All right, so it looks like there's a little bit of a foul. Okay, that's a bunch of BS. That is a bunch of BS. Who's the referee here? What's going to happen here? Um. This is referee Robert Sabiga. New York City FC players are trying to defend Chano. Toronto players are trying to make sure Chano is okay. First of all, it's very good that this this is not a full-on brouhaha. Because if it was a full-on brouhaha, this can definitely turn into a melee. Um, so, it looks like there was a foul on Toronto. Chano gets frustrated that there was a foul there. <laughs> And Chano tries, like, almost clipping the Toronto player's, um, number 30's leg. Um, and, uh, the Toronto player tries, like, to push him off. And, uh, Chano just acts like he just got punched in the face. This is true embellishment. If you don't know what the word embellishment means, if you would have just watched this video, you would know exactly what it means. This is completely... This is unacceptable. You you didn't even get hit in the face, and he's holding his face. Um, but as long as it's good, it wasn't a brouhaha. And let, if you don't know what a brouhaha means, it's like a noisy reaction to something. So, and I definitely agree. This is such embellishment over here, and we're gonna be reviewing that a lot during the season. LAFC midfielder Edward, Edward Estusta was also found guilty of uh, embellishment in the 76th minute of his team's matchup against the San Jose Earthquakes on August 8th. Atuesta has been fined an undisclosed amount while the yellow card issued to San Jose forward Jeremy Ebabis Eba will be absolved from his yellow card accumulation total and any disciplinary points from San Jose's total will be dismissed. LAFC was also found in a violation of the league's mass confirmation policy, confrontation policy in the second half stoppage time. The club has been issued a warning for their first violation. Um, so I know you still can't see it, but let's check what goes on over here. San Jose is up 2-1 against LAFC in the 75th minute. Let's see. So it looks good so far. Slow passing. Oh, that is such, oh, that is such BS. Wow, wow. Um, if I was the referee in this scenario, I would not even stop the game for this. This is such embellishment. This is not even close to a foul. Um, that is, that is, that's terrible. Um, but it, at least it wasn't, um, at least nobody was injured or nobody was fined for it. Um, so yeah. I'm also going to address the rumor of apparently Lionel Messi coming to enter Miami. I do think, you know, Messi, Messi's still going. Messi's on PSG at the moment. Um, but I think uh, MLS for him in this case is more of a career ender uh, for him. His career is almost over, but not quite over just yet. So I do think it'll be a few more seasons until Lionel Messi does make that decision whether he will come to M uh, to the MLS or not. And if he does, will he join Inter Miami? Who's going to offer him the most money uh, per season to join? Um, 
And so that's definitely something to keep in mind as well. Lionel Messi just won his first World Cup. Um, he's 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 in the spotlight right now, and I think everybody knows that. Um, so right now, if he were to join the MLS in the upcoming seasons, he definitely have everybody's interest, and he would want um, everybody. He everybody would want him. So uh, I do think it's a few more years until he would make that decision whether he does come to the MLS or not. And for all New York City FC fans out there, uh, it's not something to worry about, but it's something to keep in mind about. Um, as you, you probably know, Valentin Castellanos, who was originally on New York City FC, left NYCFC, and now New York City Football Club uh, Maxi Morales also left um, New York City FC uh, to join the Argentinian side racing club. Now... These are two powerhouses. Morales is out there. Morales is one of those examples of short but strong, short but tiny. Morales, Morales looks like someone you can just toss to the side, but he's not. He's out there, no matter his size. He's out there. He's doing his part out there. He's contributing to the team. Uh, Valentin Castellanos was. He was out there. He was putting those balls behind the net. He was. He was fan. He was brilliant. He was just brilliant. But um. Morales too. Morales, as I just said, no matter his size, he was always out there. He was always doing his best out there. And you know, some games, some games, he was just a powerhouse. I mean, most games, he was just a powerhouse. But now, is this something to worry about for New York City FC on defense? You do have Chano. You have uh, Ismael Tajerishradi close to the back of the net. Um, Ismael Tajerishradi is fantastic as well. But is there is there a problem in midfield? Because midfield, I always say, is important just because of the fact because that can make or break which direction the ball goes in. If you have no center, you have only the top and you only have the bottom. You don't have the actual mid, middle of the field. And this can determine which way the ball goes. And if the defense is sleeping, that's a problem. Uh, you can easily tell me, defense, don't sleep then. Well, that's not always the case here. Um, but, so... We're going to have to see the way uh, New York City FC's lineup is uh, going to be uh, on February 25th since they are actually doing the first game. Um, they got the first game uh, on the 25th, so uh, let's see. They also have so many young players as well. They have such young athletic people. They have um, actually the youngest player on MLS soccer in general. Um these athletic kids, these athletic straight out of college kids, or I do believe even still in college, they they should have a huge say in the game. They should be able to, they, if they should be able to carry that ball. They should be fast. They should be fast on the field. No one should be able to catch up to them. And if New York City FC has those, well, if those kids uh, reach their high potential and put their all into the game, put their all mind heart and soul into the game um they should be fine they should these ki these kids on the team should be a powerhouse as well um so that's definitely something to keep in mind for new york city fc as well Alrighty, so that is it for this mls podcast thank you for joining us everybody i will see you all on the monday after february 25th to, to uh to talk about the most controversial plays in MLS soccer over the first week. Thank you all for watching, everybody. And I will see you all on the, tw well, for 25th, 26th. I will see you all on February 27th. Have a great day, everybody. And I will see you all. Once again, this is Max. Um, and I will see you all real soon.